Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be covering week one practice problems. So there are three practice problems, debug, half, and prime. Right? So let's begin. First one is debug. So in this problem set, they want you to familiarize yourself with debugging and this skill will come in handy later on in the course and also even in the first week's problem set. And in the background, they mention how there are two types of errors. One is syntactical errors and another is logical errors. And this lab has several synta syntactical errors that you'll be seeing. All right. So um, let me just start this lab. Make direct. Okay. So <laughs> let's try make debug and see what happens. Okay. Sorry. Um, debug okay so error uh, use of undeclared identifier name okay so for this first problem it's uh, because this name is not declared so maybe we can declare this and if you noticed even the second variable is not declared so um, sorry not int okay so you have to read like what's going on in the sentence what are we asking the user to give so it's get string what's your name so this is gonna be a string variable and this is also a string variable because it's using get string. So okay, that's done. Let's try and make debug again. Okay, so as you can see, we are missing the semicolon. So let me add the semicolon here. And if you notice, it's missing sem semicolon on every line. All right, so let's try again. Uh, print, it's using print, but we're supposed to use printf instead. And um, if you also noticed, um, it's a string, right? And the placeholder for string is s, so we have to use s here instead of i. i is for integers. So make debug again. Okay, another error. Seems like printf requires standard I/O um, library, standard I/O header. So let's include that. Okay, so we are hopefully done with this problem set yeah we are done um, let me just do a quick check 50 to check that you know everything is complete all right so um, the check seems to have passed and we shall move on with the lab called half all right the practice problem called half and there's a video here you can watch to understand what kind of scenarios you might need this program for. So here they show you a demo of how the program is supposed to work. You have a bill, before tax and tip, the sales tax percentage and the tip percentage. All right. So let's get started. Let me clear the screen. It's control L, CD, and it's done. Control L again. So um, make directory how. Okay, so uh, some things to note before doing this problem set, this uh, lab, is that the input to our function half is bill, text, and tip. And text and tip are based on percentages, and we have to convert it to more appropriate formats to use for calculation, which we'll go into more detail. Uh, in just a bit and the tax should be added to the bill amount before calculating the tip and then in the end we're supposed to return half of the full amount all right so um, let's get started so first we get a float for bill before tax then a float for the tax percent then an int for tip percent all right so let's do this half function so in this half function we want to, to calculate first the total bill with the text considered all right so bill I'll just use bill underscore text equals to bill amount plus bill amount um, times tax percentage Okay, so um, this actually won't work because, for example, 
um, bill is 30 bucks and tax percentage is 20 bucks so this is gonna be six hundred dollars <laughs> so this obviously doesn't make sense we need to convert our tax from 20 percent to 0 0.2 all right so that we can do a multiplication with the bill amount to identify what this 0.2 percent is and what is the amount to add into our tax all right so how do we do that is to bring 20 to 0 0.2 is going to be divided by 100 all right so that's done to find the bill which includes tax okay so now that we have the the bill that includes tax we can finally calculate the bill that includes the tip as well okay so bill underscore tip is equals to bill underscore tax um, plus bill underscore tax times tip percent and similar for this we have to divide 100 because we want to convert the percentage to uh, a decimal point so that we can multiply with the bill to figure out to figure out how much the tip is all right so here we go so now we have to return the half of the total bill right so half bill is gonna be bill underscore tip which is the total bill divide by two and then we can return uh, half bill okay so um i hope you guys understood what i did so far um, if you didn't maybe just think through uh, draw out a diagram uh, and try to figure out maybe draw a flow chart or something okay so um that's that let me just uh, try to run this program and see if it works make half okay oh yeah i i noticed this but then i thought i'll add them later on but yeah sure uh float here float here and float here okay um, we have to declare the variables that we are using <laughs> all right so make half bill amount oh my gosh i was using the variable names that are here instead of the variable names that we are passing into this function so yeah once again we are supposed to use the variables here all right uh, um, not not those that you see here because this is the uh, the variables that are passed into the function and then we are actually changing the name okay so that's that's pretty nice as well you you get to learn this while doing the while doing the practice problems and you get to learn this earlier compared to uh, people who didn't do the practice problems so yeah nice I didn't make this mistake when I was doing it for the first time <laughs> okay so i think that's about it make half okay yeah <laughs> wow what a embarrassing mistake okay so dot slash half let's try the first example 1250 eight dollars eight seven five t percent 20 and you owe 817 each okay so it seems to work let me try use check 52 validate my answer okay so we passed all the tests that's nice first try okay never mind it's not really first try but yeah okay so, all right so now we're gonna move on to the practice problem called prime and this was the most challenging one and i'm sure many of you guys are here because of this practice problem and i hope to enlighten you guys and teach you guys how i did solve this problem i'm sure there are many ways of doing it but i think the method i used was the most efficient all right so here we're gonna learn and practice for loops using modulos and creating boolean functions and i'm assuming you guys know what prime numbers are and uh let's get started 
so make directory prime cd prime and let's download the distribution code alrighty um, code prime uh, code should have just used GUI alright anyways so we are to complete the boolean function here but before that let me just go through what the current code is doing there's quite a bit written here so first we have the uh, headers we have the function declaration then the code is asking for the minimum number and then we have the maximum number and here we are printing the prime numbers all right so this is how it's going to work minimum maximum and in between all of those numbers we're gonna we're gonna print out all the prime numbers that exist all right so how did i solve this problem okay so let me show you uh, but to explain to you i thought the best way to explain to you is use uh, using a whiteboard all right so let me show you how i did it all right so how i did it is in this function we start from the minimum and we move up to maximum and within this loop we check for the prime number and if it's a prime number we are uh, printing what the number is all right so how it's gonna work let's say for example um, the list of number is one two three four five six seven eight nine uh, ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen uh, and so on right so let's say these are the numbers so so for prime numbers how it works is it's a prime number if it's not divisible by anything before it so for example uh, we can ignore one because we know one is not a prime number uh, and everything is divisible by one, by one so we can literally just remove it all right so let me remove it it's out of the equation so we are always starting from 2 so is 2 divisible by anything before it no okay um, so 2 is a prime number is 3 divisible by anything before it no so 3 is a prime number 4 is divisible by something before it so 4 is not a prime number 5 is not divisible by, uh, 5 is not divisible by anything before it so it's a prime number as well so the method is we will be using a for loop to check all the numbers before the current number so for example we have 13 okay so we're gonna divide 13 by 12 and see if it's perfectly divisible we're supposed to we are gonna divide 13 by 2 and see if it's perfectly divisible then we're gonna divide 13 by 3 13 by 4 13 by 5 13 by 6 all the way to the end here all right this is gonna be for all numbers and if you think about it we can do this very simply using a for loop and let me show you how we can do that okay so here we are getting the number right so for and i equals to zero i less than the number i plus plus okay so here actually we mentioned how we are ignoring number one right so here we can just start from two okay so we want to check if the number is divisible by 2 perfectly all right which is i so we can do this if a number is divisible by i completely so it's equals to 0 with remainder 0 that means that is divisible by i then we want to return false okay that means that it is not a prime number okay so in this for loop, the i will increment and increment and increment all the way till it reaches number, okay? So let's say for example, um, the number is 11, okay? i is gonna increase and try to divide, so it's gonna start from 2, 11 is not divisible by 2, so this is so this if condition is not going to be true and it's not going to return false so i will continuously increase all the way until 
uh, 10 in this example and then once it reaches 10 and it's still not divisible perfectly then we want to return true so when it has passed the condition so if it has filled the condition then it will just return false and the loop will end and if it completes the loop that means that it has tried to divide it by itself uh, tried to divide itself by all the numbers preceding it and it has still not returned false which means that it was still not divisible by anything before it so it's gonna be returning um, true in the end after completing the thorough process of dividing itself by everything before it then if it's still alive then we're gonna send true okay so yeah um, this should be working let's try it out all right I hope you guys understood my explanation if you guys didn't uh, comment down below and I'll try to elaborate on uh, to what I meant and hopefully it might um, help others as well so uh, let's run this so make prime uh, let me just check if I'm missing any semicolons um, and uh, yeah everything's looking fine make prime dot slash prime so we are being asked for minimum one maximum a hundred and let's just take a look what oh okay so it's uh it's starting from one so let's try to figure out why it's starting from one yeah so um we can have a special test case for one okay so if um, the number is equals to one then we just want to return uh, return false because we know uh, one is not a prime number okay so this is just a special scenario for the number one um, there might be more efficient ways to do this rather than you know creating a whole less if condition for uh, the number one uh, but at this current stage I think it's not too bad to do it this way so let's uh, try running it again make prime dot slash prime one to a hundred all right so we have all so in the end you can see 97 89 83 79 so it seems to be perfectly uh, conforming to uh, the answer we have here let me try using check 50 and see if it passes the check all right so it seems to have passed the check and we are done for this video i uh, hope you guys learned something from it and if you guys enjoyed it and it was helpful uh, hit the like button and subscribe and if you have any questions comment down below and i'll try my best to help you guys and enjoy the rest of your day bye bye